Plyometric exercises are a vital component of ACL rehab as a precursor for return to sport. But when is it safe to begin these exercises? What exercises should you perform? And how can you implement and progress them over time? In this video, I'm gonna show you four stages of plyometric training that you can use as a guideline following ACL reconstruction. These are based on a 2021 article by Buckthorpe and Delavia. The goal of these exercises are to maximize performance, improve movement quality, and reduce risk of re-injury. Progressing through these four stages will be primarily based on three themes. Number one, the intensity, complexity, and loading demands of the task. For example, you will see a general theme of progressions from linear to multiplanar movement, gradual reductions in ground contact time, increases in speed, effort, and volume, and a progression from bilateral to unilateral plyometrics. Stages will generally consist of four types of plyometric exercises. Bilateral offset. This involves landing on one leg before taking off on the other. An example is an alternating box split jump. Bilateral asymmetrical. Both feet take off and or contact the ground simultaneously, but in different positions, such as with a split squat jump. Bilateral symmetrical. Both legs accept and produce force simultaneously, such as with a bilateral squat jump. And unilateral. Eccentrically accepts load on one leg and concentrically develops force and power on one leg. This can be on the same leg, such as with a single leg box jump, or from one to the other, such as with alternating lateral jumps. Theme number two, your capacity to tolerate these demands. There will be prerequisite criteria to ensure you possess the appropriate range of motion, strength, and movement quality prior to starting exercises in a given stage. While the focus will be on function, time is still a consideration. Plyometric exercises will likely start around the three month marker later, with each stage lasting one to two months. However, the protocol should always be customized based on the patient's response. And this brings us to the third and final theme, which is your response to the task. Exercises should not lead to increases in pain and or swelling, and you want to avoid excessive muscle soreness as this increases recovery time and makes training on subsequent days more challenging. Stage one, exercises will be low intensity, have longer ground reaction times, and consist of bilateral offset, asymmetrical, and sub-max symmetrical plyometrics. Criteria to start stage one includes less than or equal to one out of 10 pain at rest, and less than two out of 10 pain during activities of daily living, has full knee extension range of motion and knee flexion greater than 120 degrees, demonstrates less than 20% asymmetry in loading during a bilateral squat, and possesses isometric knee extensor strength greater than 70% of the uninjured side. Here are some examples of stage one plyometrics. Submaximal squat jumps to a box. The box will allow you to focus on concentric power development while reducing landing impact forces. During landing, you should aim to demonstrate good knee and hip flexion angles, about 90 degrees each, minimize excessive movement of the trunk and pelvis, and maintain good knee alignment. A lunge pushback. Start feet together and step forward as if you are performing a lunge. Control the deceleration with your forward foot and then push back to the starting position. Again, focus on landing with good acceptance through both the hip and the knee and maintain good alignment in the pelvis, trunk, and knee. And finally, an example for bilateral offset plyometrics would be either step up jumps with the same leg or alternating. Authors also suggest considering the surface or environment on which exercises are performed. Softer surfaces have shown to reduce peak ground reaction forces and lead to less muscle soreness compared to harder surfaces. So for example, if you find that you cannot tolerate a given plyometric exercise due to increases in pain, swelling, and or excessive muscle soreness, one consideration is performing these in a pool, on sand, a padded surface, or another softer surface in order to reduce the impact forces 
and thus the load placed through your knee. Stage two, exercises will be moderate intensity bilateral and unilateral plyometrics with a focus on unilateral deceleration capabilities. Criteria to safely progress to stage two includes the ability to run on a treadmill with good kinematics for 10 minutes at eight kilometers an hour, demonstrates good bilateral landing kinematics and good single leg squat kinematics, can perform eight single leg repetitions on a leg press with at least 1.25 times body weight, and possesses isokinetic knee extensor and flexor strength greater than 80% of the uninjured side. Here are some examples of stage two plyometrics. The squat jump to a box can be progressed by performing a squat jump in place to maximal height. You will now land from a higher height, resulting in higher impact forces. Another possible progression is performing a counter movement maximal broad jump. Jump as far as you can forward while landing with optimal movement quality. The lunge pushback can be progressed to a forward and eventually lateral single leg step and land. Jump from one leg to the other while demonstrating a controlled landing. Focus on absorbing the landing with good knee and hip flexion angles, as well as maintaining good pelvis, trunk, and knee alignment. You can progress the step up jumps to either split squat jumps with the same leg or alternating. And additionally, you will want to add in a bilateral drop jump since this is a criteria for entering stage three. Start at lower heights and slowly build up to 30 centimeters or about one foot as tolerated. Stage three. Exercises will be higher intensity and have shorter ground reaction times. The goal with bilateral plyometrics is to build strength, power, and rate of force development while unilateral plyometrics will focus on single leg power, motor control, and acceleration. Criteria to safely progress to stage three includes demonstrating good bilateral drop jump mechanics, good single leg landing control, and can perform eight single leg repetitions on the leg press with at least 1.5 times body weight. Here are some examples of stage three plyometrics. Bilateral squat jumps can be progressed to a tuck jump, which will further increase landing intensity. Or you can implement rotational jumps, which will challenge landing in a different plane of motion. The lateral single leg step and land in stage two can be progressed by jumping off one leg, landing on the other, and then immediately jumping back to the starting leg. Another option is performing a step cut at various angles, which will start to combine plyometrics with pre-planned running drills. Step and land forward and then cut at pre-planned angles. Start at 30 degrees and then build up to 45, 60, and eventually to 90 degrees. Split squat jumps will progress to single leg squat jumps. You can start with single leg squat jumps to a double leg landing or single leg squat jumps to a box in order to reduce landing impact forces. Over time, progress to single leg landings on the floor. The bilateral drop jump will progress to a single leg drop jump. Step off an elevated surface, land on one leg, and then immediately jump onto another elevated surface. Your goal is to land and jump leaving the ground as quickly as possible. And finally, another consideration for stage three is adding in single leg hops. Start in place and as tolerated, progress to forward and lateral hops. The goal is to spend as little time on the ground as possible in order to mimic sport type tasks. Stage four. Exercises will consist of very high intensity bilateral and unilateral plyometrics with the goal of progressing to reactive movements and preparing you for sport specific training. Criteria to safely progress to stage four includes possessing isokinetic knee extensor and flexor strength greater than 90% of the uninjured side, ability to perform eight single leg repetitions on a leg press with at least 1.5 times body weight, and demonstrates good movement quality during unilateral landing and deceleration exercises, bilateral and unilateral drop jumps, and while changing directions. Here are some examples of stage four plyometrics. 
Bilateral squat jumps can be progressed by performing weighted squat jumps. The lateral jump from stage two and three can be progressed by using a medicine ball. As you jump to the side, the ball will create a perturbation and exaggerate your lateral momentum, making the exercise a challenging reactive drill. Single leg jumps can be progressed by increasing the height and or distance of each jump. An example is performing single leg forward jumps over hurdles. The single leg drop jump from stage three can be progressed by increasing the height of both surfaces. This will increase the impact force on the initial drop and then increase the amount of power and strength required to jump onto a higher surface. And another option is performing a single leg lateral drop jump. Step off an elevated surface to the side, land on one leg, and then jump up as quickly as possible. The authors provide a general recommendation of gradually increasing volume or foot contacts, starting with 50 and eventually building up to 200 per day of training. For example, in stage one, if you perform a box jump for two sets of 10 reps, same leg step up jumps for two sets of five reps each, and a lunge pushback for two sets of five reps, that would accumulate to 50 foot contacts for that day. Foot contacts are one way to measure volume and it is likely worth tracking this daily, weekly, and even monthly. Exercises can be performed two to four days per week. These numbers are just a general recommendation, but as I mentioned earlier, you need to monitor your response to exercise, including pain, swelling, and or muscle soreness. Find an appropriate starting place and build up over time as tolerated, making adjustments along the way. As you move from stage one to stage four, here are some examples of exercise progressions. A bilateral squat jump. Start by jumping to a box, progress to max vertical jumps, then to tuck jumps, and finally to weighted squat jumps. Single leg plyometrics. Start with bilateral offset, such as step up jumps with the same leg, progress to split squat jumps, then to single leg box jumps, and finally to single leg hurdle jumps. Drop jumps. Due to higher impact forces and increased capacity requirements, these will start at stage two. Start with a bilateral drop jump, building up to 30 centimeters. Progress to a single leg drop jump to another surface, and finally, progress by increasing the height of both surfaces. These four stages of plyometric exercises can help serve as a guideline following ACL rehabilitation in order to safely return to sport. The authors provide a general framework for exercise progression based on the demands of the task, as well as your capacity to tolerate these demands. Throughout the process and in conjunction with these exercises, you should also place an emphasis on lower body strengthening, running, sprinting, on-field sports specific training, and other movement tasks as outlined by the authors. If you want to learn more about ACL rehab, I highly recommend checking out this open access paper, watching our other ACL rehab videos, as well as listening to a podcast episode we did with Dr. Delavia, the co-author of the paper review today. You can find links for all of these in the description box down below. All right, that's it for today. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Until next time.